In this video, I'll cover file writing. To write a file in Rust, we'll need both the file struct and the write trait. Let's create a new file. The create function returns a result indicating a possible error. I don't want to spend a lot of time covering error handling in this video. For our purposes, we want to return the error from our main function, if one occurs, but otherwise use the value. The question mark operator does just this. We'll need to add a return of an empty IO result to main. We'll also need an empty OK as the happy path return value. Now, anytime we call a function that can return an I.O. error, we can use the question mark operator to simplify our error handling. We'll start by creating a buffer to hold the data we want to write. Let's start with the basic write function to write out our data. On most computers, the data is not immediately written to disk but stored in the kernel's write buffers. Some applications, like databases, need to know if the data has been written. The sync call forces the write. It also returns an error if the write can't complete. Let's run our program and look at our output. There's a problem with our logic. The write call can be interrupted before all the data is written. Our current code may not write all the data in our buffer. Because the write call returns the number of bytes actually written every time we call it, we can use that to keep a running total of the bytes written so far. We stop writing when the total bytes written is equal to the size of the data we have to write. We can run our program again and see that everything is fine. Writing these loops is tedious. Fortunately, there is a convenience function, writeAll, that does the same thing. The write and write all functions don't work directly on strings. We can use the asBytes function on the answer to get the array of bytes from the string. The write fump function allows us to use formatted strings. The format args macro builds the arguments value required by the write fump function. Since writing is a trait, you can pass the file into another type that also implements the write trait, but gives you additional features. For example, there's the buff writer. Let's bring in the buffered writer. Buff writer wraps the I.O. functions to improve I.O. performance. The data is held in a buffer inside the buff writer until that buffer is full. Instead of several small writes in your program, the kernel sees fewer but larger writes. This can improve performance. The risk is your program or computer may crash before the buffer is flushed. This can lead to data loss. This buffering is different from kernel buffering 
which happens inside the kernel. When the buffer writer is closed, it will automatically get flushed to disk. Files aren't the only things that implement write. Network connections are a common example. Another is a vector of bytes. Just like a kind of in-memory file, we can write strings to it, building up a result in memory. Building up data in memory is a technique we might want to use if we were writing a response from a web server, for example. That's more performant than making many small writes. Thanks for watching. You might wonder why I'm making these videos. The simple answer is I'm doing it to help me learn Rust. If you have any Rust topics you'd like to see me cover, please leave it down in the comments. If you want to be notified of new videos I post, please subscribe. And once again, thanks for watching.